Hey, welcome back to Archihacks. It's a channel where we share all the life hacks for architects. And this video is a follow-up from our part 1 Photoshop tips and tricks for architects. So make sure to check that out if you haven't already. So in this video, we're going to talk about a lot of methods that can make your life a lot easier when you're using Photoshop. So this includes techniques that use various selection methods, as well as using actions to automate repetitive tasks. Are you guys ready? Let's dive right into Photoshop. All right, so we're in Photoshop now. The first thing that I want to talk to you about is selection. You're probably familiar with using, you know, marquees or lasso tools to like make selections on your images, such as using magic wand tool. You've probably used this before. And something that I don't see very often is using quick masks. So quick mask can be accessed using the shortcut key Q. So once you activate that, you'll see that this icon becomes darker. And when you hit it again, it becomes lighter again. Whenever quick mask gets activated, you might notice that your layer color is slightly different. And brushing suddenly starts painting this translucent red color. And this means that you're painting in masked mode. And what's really cool about this is that once you exit the mode by hitting the Q or hitting the icon, you can see that your selection or your color turns into a selection. In this case, we've actually selected everything that's around it. So there's one thing that you need to, we need to do to quickly set this up. And that is by double clicking on this little icon here. And I'm going to switch over to selected areas. So this quick, quick mask options allows you to kind of customize your user experience. So what you just saw was 50% opacity red that indicates masked area, which means not selected. So in our case, we want to paint the areas that we want to select. And let's keep using red 50% opacity for our selection. Once we hit OK, we can see that we can now paint over areas and that turns into our selection. And we can quickly cut them out and do anything that we want to do with it. Now, the reason why this is a really cool technique is that this can be used in combination with everything else. So for example, once we have selected everything using our magic wand tool, I'll turn off contiguous so that we can select every um, disconnected areas of white. So this technique can be really useful when you're cutting out like a person or furniture from an image so that you can place it in your image. So now, as you can see, some parts of the table is cut out for some, uh, because the color is a little too similar to the wall. So we'll quickly enter the quick mask mode and we'll use a brush tool and use white color to paint away at the areas that we want to select. I'll make sure that our opacity is 100%. And then holding down shift, I'll drag along the side to create a perfectly horizontal brush stroke. All right, we'll try, we'll get a little bit closer and repeat that process. And by the way, adjusting your brush size and feathering amount can be done using holding down Alt and then dragging your right mouse click button side to side. That adjusts your diameter. And when you move it up and down, this adjusts your feathering. So make to take advantage of that instead of having to go into the options every time. Another really cool technique with brush tool is that if you're holding down Shift and click on the second spot, it creates a perfectly straight stroke between those two points. So again, we will click once, move on to our second point, holding down shift, click again, and then this creates another stroke just like that. All right, once that is done, we will move on to our floor area. So we're going to go ahead and create a layer mask. Holding down Alt allows you to take away the areas you've selected and more on the mask in the previous video. So make sure to check that out if you're still wondering. And then for the bottom side, I think it is, it'll be easier to use color range for that. So color range allows you to select a specific color instead of, and it's, this is actually really similar to the magic wand tool, but actually gives you a little bit more control. So we'll, we'll demonstrate how to use that. In order to access color range, you go into select color range, and using this eyedropper tool, you can select a certain area. So we'll do that. And using the slider with fuzziness, we will try to like narrow down on the areas 
that we think are relevant and not eat away too much in the areas that we want to keep. Once that looks pretty good, we'll say OK. With all these selected, with the brush tool selected, with the black color, and we'll go over to our mask on the layer and start to paint away. But as you can see, some parts of the brown is actually um, transparent. And that is because our color range was only able to select part of this color. So in order to kind of add more contrast to the selection, we can actually go back to our quick mask. And I'll quickly remove this part, the part that we want to keep. And because our quick mask functions just the same way the colors do, we can actually use adjustments like levels and curves. So I'll be going into Control M to bring up our curves. So what we want to do once we've entered the quick selection is, by, is to hold down Control and M. Hold down Control and hit M to bring up color adjustments or curves adjustment. And what we're going to do is and as you, once you start playing around with these, some of these sliders, you'll see that our selection goes away once we move the white more dominant. And when we make the black more dominant, you'll see that more of the images become selected. So this is probably what we want. We only want to leave, uh, we want to increase the contrast as much as possible and say OK. And it will release from the quick mask and paint again at our mask. And as you can see, this time around, we are able to remove much more of the floor this time. And with a similar technique, I'm just going to go ahead and brush away at some of these areas. And now you can quick, and then now you can use um, marquee or your brush tools to quickly chip away at the areas that you don't want to have. Making selections or painting things away with brush becomes a lot easier when you're using a tablet. So if you are looking into getting one, I can recommend you mine. Mine is a very simple Wacom tablet. It costs less than $100. So I'll link it in the description below so you can check it out. OK, so this is how we crop out a table from a picture. The color range technique that I just showed you becomes really helpful when you're using Material ID to edit some 3D renderings. Let's move on to the next example. OK, next tip involves using selection. Photoshop provides you with multiple ways of selecting images. Namely, you can use geometric marquee, or you could use lasso tools. And with a combination of keyboard shortcuts like Control, Shift, and Alt, you could create various combinations. But what I find most useful with renderings, 3D renderings like this one, is actually color range. So color range allows you to select a specific color, which is very useful when you're working with material ID layer like this one. So in our rendering, let's say our purpose is to make our trees a little bit greener or actually a little bit yellower. So what I'm going to do is by going into our material ID layer. And by the way, you can isolate your layer by holding down Alt and clicking on the eye icon. And when you click that eye again, it'll bring you back to what you had before. So we'll isolate our material ID layer, go into selection, color range, and then try to click on the parts of the image that you want to select. So for our instance, I'm going to be clicking on where the trees were. And by adjusting the slider, this allows you to capture more of the similar colors or less. If you make it entirely zero, it'll only capture exact identical color in that range. But for our instance, we'll be increasing our fuzziness just a little bit so that we can capture most of our trees. So once that selection is made, I will restore our view. And this time, I'm going to create a hue and saturation um, adjustment layer. And when you make an adjustment layer with some sort of selection, it will automatically mask your adjustment layer with that selection. So as you can see, you can see the similar kind of mask that we've seen before. And as usual, black is the parts where the adjustment is not applied, and white is only where it's applied. So we will go ahead and make our trees slightly yellower by moving down our hue set slider. 
We'll also make it slightly more saturated by increasing our saturation slider. There we go, it looks a little bit more lively. All right, last but not least, I wanna to talk to you briefly about actions. Action allows you to make changes to multiple images repeatedly. So let's say we have these three images that we all want to save to a certain folder. But instead of saving them individually, this is what we could do. You can access actions by going into Windows and Actions. Once you do that, this little pop-up will happen. And you can simply create a new action and name it something like Quick Save. And I'll put it within Custom Actions folder and start recording. So once you press that button, it'll automatically start tracking all the changes that you're making in the scene. So this applies to like actual Photoshop editing. What we actually want to do with this file is to actually make the image 50% of its original size and save it into a different folder. So what I'm going to do is start recording this quick save option. Now holding down, you can go to image, image size, and change our width and height to 50%. Once that is done, I'll say OK. Now that our image is 50% of the size, I can go ahead and save it. Actually, if you just save it, it'll save over the original file, and sometimes that might not be what you're looking for. I'm going to go ahead and save as, and choose a folder where we want to save all of our 50% sizes. So I've just created a folder called 50%, and I'll save our theater file as, say, JPEG. And I'll say, click Save, and say OK. Now what we could even do is close our file, say no so we don't overwrite and then finish our action right there and then now what we could do is simply click on the name of the action and hit the play button to repeat the whole process with this file so let's say let's see what happens i'll hit play selection our file just closed after shrinking the image 50 percent i'll repeat the process one more time as you can see, with a single click, we just executed multiple actions uh, all at once. Now we'll go ahead and check what we got. So we are at the 50% folder that we've just created. And as you can see, all the renderings are saved into that folder that we've designated. And each file is 50% of its original resolution. The application um, potential for this action is limitless. This will save you tons of time when you're working with projects involving multiple files that require repetitive processes. So I hope you guys find these tips useful. All right, that's it for this video. But in the next video, we'll follow up with additional tips and tricks about some of the most useful websites that you should know when you're making visualizations. So make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for that. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up and maybe share it with your friends who might find it helpful as well. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye now.